From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 530 News. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm Janelle Slade. Billings police say they are looking into a case of alleged dog abuse at a local boarding business after video went viral. The owner of the pet daycare facility says he was devastated when he learned of the potential abuse from local law enforcement. We'll have that story in just a moment, but first three major bills to overhaul Montana's marijuana laws are all headed to the full state house, but not before some dramatic moments. MTN's Jonathan Amberian reports it came down after two were initially voted down and then lawmakers reconsidered their actions. The legislature is heading out for a short Easter break and approaching another key deadline. That rush meant they had to take quick action on three major marijuana bills. House Bills 670, 701, and 707 each lay out a competing vision for how the future recreational marijuana system in Montana should be implemented. 670 would create a single license for medical and recreational marijuana dispensaries and use tax revenues for a trust fund to address negative impacts of marijuana use. 701 would have separate licenses for medical and recreational sales and send the money to an account for mental health and substance abuse treatment. 707 would set up a three-tiered system with marijuana growers selling to wholesalers who would sell to dispensaries, and it would put tax revenue in the general fund. The House Business and Labor Committee held hearings this week on all three, and the House Taxation Committee heard testimony on the bills Thursday morning. If any of these bills are to move forward, they have to pass out of the House by April 8th, so committee chairs said they had to take action on them Thursday. Democrats generally opposed all three bills, saying they had issues with the changes they made from the voter-approved initiative. Several Republican lawmakers said they wanted to see all three bills move on to the House floor and possibly the Senate, so there's more time to consider what they see as good points in each. But House Business and Labor initially approved 670 and voted down 707. Then taxation voted to reject 701, the bill endorsed by legislative leadership. Immediately after the votes, lawmakers held discussions in the hallway outside the committee rooms. Eventually, they returned to their committees and reconsidered their actions on both 707 and 701, agreeing to send them to the full House. House Speaker Wiley Galt says the three bills will appear on the House floor on Tuesday, and they're expecting a number of potential amendments. But whichever bills make it through the House, it's likely there will be much more work done on them in the Senate. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. Thanks, Jonathan. If the legislature cannot agree on any marijuana reform bill, recreational sales would still go forward under the framework laid out in voter approved initiative 190. Well, today the House Judiciary Committee tabled a bill that would impose stricter laws on a person convicted of a second DUI. That decision even after emotional testimony from a family of a boy killed in February in what Missoula County prosecutors allege was a DUI crash on Highway 93. And the family of 10 year old Brecken Beard told legislators this bill could, could, could prevent the kind of tragedy that's devastated them by intervening in the process sooner. I'm not just a angry, upset parent that it, laws has lost their son. My son would be alive today had there been more severe penalties and longer probation, um, more jail time, a longer monitoring period. When a person gets a second DUI, it's a huge red flag that something is not working in this person's life and that just punishing them is not enough. Um, if they could get better, they would. That bill, sponsored by Republican Representative Sharon Grief, would impose an automatic license suspension for two years after a second DUI conviction and require a person to wear an alcohol monitoring ankle bracelet for two years as well. Well, the owner of a pet daycare facility says he was devastated when he learned of potential abuse after it went viral on social media. The videos posted by Isabel Quinn show an employee at Big Sky Pet Resort harshly handling dogs at the facility. One video shows a male employee kicking a dog, which you can hear the dog squeal in the background. Another video shows the same employee grabbing another dog by the neck and dragging it across an open playroom. And a third video appears to show the same employee striking another dog as multiple dogs run around the same room. Well, Big Sky Pet Resort owner Mark Underwood tells Q2 that Billings Animal Control alerted him about those videos. He says he investigated and then terminated the employee. The woman who shot the video is a former employee. 
The video that I took was on March 25th. Um, he was hitting the dogs because they were just being dogs, you know. Um, if they're ever too annoying for him or barking too loud, something he doesn't like, he will hit them, punch them, kick them, throw them across the room, drag them, anything like that that he would do to them. I'm surprised some of them are still walking, to be completely honest with you. Um, some of them been punched in the ribs, like, brutally, and I just can't believe they're still walking. Owner Mark Underwood says, in part, we at Big Sky Pet Resort are saddened and appalled at the recent treatment of dogs in our care by an employee. Over the years, we have tried to earn the trust of each pet owner. That trust has now been lost, and we are going to do everything in our power to try to regain it. Well, Billings Police Department spokesman Lieutenant Brandon Woolley confirmed there is an investigation underway into the matter, but did not have any other details to release. Well, as Montana opens COVID-19 vaccine for everyone age 16 and up today, the state's governor got his own first dose. Governor Greg Gianforte got a shot of the Pfizer vaccine at the Walgreens pharmacy in Helena. Now, he says he felt good after the shot and the pharmacy asked him to return in three weeks for a second dose. The state directed all Montanans 16 and older would be eligible for vaccines on April 1st. And Gianforte says getting vaccinated is a key step to getting Montana back to normal. He thanked providers like Walgreens for what they've done to distribute these vaccines. We have other pharmacy partners. We're increase, increasing distribution. Uh, these vaccines are safe and effective, and I encourage folks to go out and get theirs. Although today marks an important milestone for life getting back to normal, here in Yellowstone County, appointments are not filling up as expected. Health officials believe it is crucial for at least 70% of people in Yellowstone County to be fully immunized in order to significantly decrease the spread of COVID-19. And to reach that goal, they need young people to get vaccinated. I want to see our numbers continue to fill up. Um, I want to start seeing us get in some of those 16 and 17 year olds. We're one of just a few communities in Montana that have the Pfizer vaccine and can offer it to the 16 and 17 year olds. So that's pretty important. Um, and um, we just hope our numbers stay high. We see the interest in the vaccine and people continue to, to come and get vaccinated and, and protect themselves. And for information on how to make an appointment, visit our website, ktvq.com. And you can start making appointments at Metro Park right now at mtreadyclinic.com. There are some changes in store. First, the clinics will run next Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and hours have shifted a bit. Now, the county expects some 2,400 doses. Anyone under the age of 18 and not living in Yellowstone County can sign up for appointments here, but make sure you go online, print, and have an adult sign a consent form first. A monumental moment today, not just for the Confederated Salish and Kootenai tribes, but for the country, as the nation's first tribal community response plan is now complete. This means tribal communities now have another tool in the fight against the missing and murdered indigenous persons crisis. MTN's Jordan Johnson shares the impact of today's announcement. The tragedy of missing and murdered Indigenous people is a harsh reality that Native people face today. Unfortunately, no tribal nation has gone untouched by this crisis. That is especially clear in the Big Sky State, where according to the Montana Missing Persons Clearinghouse, 48 of the 166 people missing in Montana are identified as Indigenous. But now this crisis has a plan. Confederated Salish and Kootenai tribal leaders announced the completion of their tribal community response plan for missing or murdered indigenous people. Not only is it the first of its kind focusing on MMIP, but it will be used nationwide by tribal communities. And the public outcry over this issue eventually generated uh, enough uh, attention in the highest levels of government in Congress and with the Attorney General uh, to direct uh, U.S. Attorney's offices to uh, consult with tribes and to develop culturally appropriate guidelines for responding to missing and murdered Indigenous person cases. The plan revolves on the response to a missing person. Once the policy is complete, it will be implemented for tribal and non-tribal members and how agencies can help one another. We see these guidelines as a way of helping um, 
officers and, and, and officials in the tribe respond on a moment's notice when the, the call first comes in. What's starting from the ground up here in Montana will soon take flight across the United States. Things that we will learn and implement from the work that the good people here have done can be utilized nationwide. But the plan doesn't just address the issues in law enforcement response. A new position under the plan hopes to alleviate the stress. And so this missing persons liaison position we feel is extremely important to keep that family in the loop. It frees up our missing persons investigator to focus solely on the investigation. CSKT Tribal Council Representative Ellie Bundy says this plan challenges agencies to do more. I challenge law enforcement agencies to step to the plate, be an active player, realize how critical you are to the success of these efforts. But for Bundy, the plan adds one of the most critical components of all. It assists communities and law enforcement agencies to remember those who are missing or have been murdered. And it serves as a guideline to the fight for justice. It's about always remembering why we make the commitment every day to do the work and who we make that commitment for. It's for those who are missing, those who have been murdered, their families who will forever hurt. The missing, murdered Indigenous persons response plan will be adopted by the Rocky Boy Chippewa Cree Reservation and will also help other tribal communities form their own response plan. In Kalispell, Jordan Johnson, MTN News. Thanks so much, Jordan. Now the response plan will be adapted across other tribal communities once they complete the pilot program through the Montana Attorney General's Office. Well, a man caught digging for treasure in Yellowstone National Park is not going on a luxury vacation. Instead, he's going to prison. 52-year-old Roderick Craythorn of Utah will go to prison for six months, followed by six months of home detention and then two years of supervised release. He'll also have to pay a fine of more than $31,000. Craythorn was caught digging in the cemetery of the Fort Yellowstone National Historical Landmark in late 2019 and early 2020. In all, he dug in 17 places in the cemetery. Craythorn told Rangers he was looking for the famous Forest Fen treasure, which was found this past September by a Michigan medical student. And tonight, some good news for all bicyclists who like to tour Yellowstone National Park. You can now ride 49 miles between the West Entrance and Mammoth Hot Springs, but park officials also caution spring weather is unpredictable, so prepare. You'll see on your screen the different routes now open for this season. Bikes are not allowed on the remaining interior park roads until opened up to the public. Updated information can be found at nps.gov. Up next on tonight's MTN 530 News on Q2, the debate continues over livestock hauling restrictions. We'll hear from those on both sides of the issue. And in sports, a head coach who got his start in Montana is now front and center on college basketball's biggest stage. We'll hear from Kelvin Sampson in just a bit. If you're gonna have warm temperatures, you may as well at least tie a record. It looks like Billings, at least at this point, tied the record for the date at 72 degrees, but we do have some wind. Forecast details coming up 